Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the precepts for a living commentary. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. So we're in Unit 1 of our Spring Quarter and this is the second lesson of three lessons from the book of Daniel. The theme for this quarter is Beyond the Present Time. Uh, the lesson in March will be focusing on the Kingdom of God. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, March the 12th. Is coming from Daniel chapter 9, verses 4 through verses 14. Lesson title is Daniel's Prayer. Before we start our lesson, let's have prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much, Lord, for this time and this space to share. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. Help us, Lord. Help us to be obedient. Help us to obey you. Obey your word. And, and this way we're able to experience your many, many blessings. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your help. Help us, Lord, that when we commit wrong against you or against one another, help us to confess. Help us to confess our sins, O oh God, so we have nothing standing in the way of you hearing our prayers and answering them. And we say thank you. Bless every listening ears. Turn hard hearts into flesh to receive. Bless every teachers. Continue, Lord, to give understanding and give strength. We thank you in advance for what you have already done, what you're doing now, and what you will continue to do in us, through us, and for us. Do it for your glory. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this lesson is outlined and it will be divided into two sections. Section one will deals with a prior of confession and that's Daniel 9 verses 4 through verses 8. Section two will deals with a prior of repentance and that's verses 9 through verses 14. And so the aim for this lesson is that we recognize human sinfulness that we trust that God forgives us of our sins and that we call on God in times of great distress before we go to our printed text let's uh, add a little bit of background and just go go back a little bit to uh, review so last week we left off in chapter 7 where Daniel had this this vision and as time goes on, he continues to have other visions. Some of these visions was uh, even was so scary that it causes him to be afraid. And so not, not only was Daniel uh, having visions, he also started to remember some things. He started to remember prophecy. He remembered that the prophet Jeremiah had written about the return of the Israelites back to Judah, back to Jerusalem. And that was an indication, indication on Daniel's part that he was deeply in the word. Daniel read his word. Daniel studied his word. How about you or myself? And so the prophet Jeremiah had written that uh, God would not allow the captives to return back before the 70 years was over. And that is in Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 11 where it says, This entire land will become a desolate wasteland. Israel and her neighboring lands will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. And also in uh, chapter 29 and verse 10, Jeremiah 29 and verse 10, it says, The truth is that you will be in Babylon for 
70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12, in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortune. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you home again to your own land. Did you hear that? So Daniel remember, he remembered these saying by the prophet Jeremiah. He remembered that this prophecy was soon to be end. And so, you know, one can ask, how did uh, a city like Jerusalem that once was so flourishing, once that was so important, it was visited by kings and queens of other nations. One can just ask now, you know, how did it get so desolate and empty? Yep, you got it. Sin, 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 sin. In 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 uh Second Kings, a uh, chapter twenty four, starting at verse three. Second Kings 24 verse 3 says, These disasters happened to Judah according to the Lord's command. He had decided to remove Judah from his presence because of the many sins of Manasseh. He had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood and the Lord would not forgive this. And so we know that the people ended up in Babylon because of sin. God cannot and will not tolerate sin. But he afflicts to teach. He used the Babylonians to teach them a lesson. And he does not afflict and not give hope. He always give hope. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. But in order for them to come back, there's a condition. Daniel knew about this condition. And what was this condition? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, and let's look at verse 12. It says, in those days when you pray, I will listen. You hear that? When you pray. Verse 13, if, if, condition, if you look for me in Earnest, T, you will find me when you seek me. Did you hear all of that? There's a looking and there's a seeking and it has to be genuine. And you know, God's promises here is not only for them, it's for us too. If, if we seek him wholeheartedly, he will be found. One of the ways of seeking him is through prior. Our lesson today is titled Daniel's Prior. We will now go to section one and it will deals with a prior of confession and that's Daniel's nine verses four through verses eight. Verse four, reading from New Living Translation, O oh Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. So again, the first couple of verses, it lets us know that Daniel was studying. He was studying the writings of the prophets and he learned from them. He learned the word of the Lord as was recorded by the prophet Jeremiah, that Jerusalem would lie desolate for 70 years. 
And about now, Daniel is is adding up like, wait a minute. That 70 years is coming to an end. And what did he do? Well, it's not in our printed text, but verse 3 lets us know that he did what he knew how to do best. He turned to the Lord and he pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. He wore rough sackcloth and sprinkled himself in ashes. So, back in Daniel's days, when they would sprinkle themselves in ashes and wear a sackcloth, it would be a sign of genuine repentance. They would afflict themselves to show that it was true repentance. They were sincere about repenting for their sins. And again, because Daniel was in the word, because he was studying the word, he, he also had knowledge of other things. He knew that the people were in the situation that they were in because of their disobedience, because of their sin, because of their wrongdoing. And Daniel also know that we serve a holy God and that all have sinned and come short of his glory. So guess what he did? Mm -hmm. He included himself. He included himself in this prayer unto the Lord, which is an indication that Daniel's concern was focused on the people's hearts. It's, it's the heart. It's a place of hearts. He was, he was more focused on that and their hearts getting right with the Lord than them leaving. Because guess what? If their, if their heart was not right, them leaving wouldn't make any difference because they would go right back into the same cycle all over again. Because where does the Lord look? Yep, in the heart. As a matter of fact, the book of Proverbs uh, says this in Proverbs chapter 4 and starting at verse 20, it says, Pay attention, my child, to what I say. Listen carefully. Don't lose sight of my words. Let them penetrate deep within your heart, for they bring life and radiance health to anyone who discovers their meaning. Above all else, guard your heart, for it affects everything you do. The place of heart. You know, our hearts, our hearts, our feelings of love and desire, it dictates to a great extent to how we live because we always will find time to do what we enjoy. Our That place of heart. It will lead us and guide us to the right or the wrong place. Depends on what we allow to settle in there. And so we are told here to guard our hearts above all else. What? Making sure that we're concentrating on those desires that will keep us on the right path. The, the Israelites... They got off the right path because they was not connected to the word of God. They were doing their own thing, following the other heathen nations. And same thing is true for us today. Here we are told to guard our hearts above all else. Making sure, making sure we concentrate on those desire that will keep us on the right path. Make sure that our affections lead us in the right direction. Making sure that we're reading and studying God's word and, and allow his word to put boundary on our desires. We have loose desires. We need to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And that is if we stay in the word of God. Don't go off everything that we see and hear. Look straight ahead. Focus straight ahead. Keep our eyes fixed on our goal. And don't get sidetracked with the 
all the other detours and all the other stuff that is going on around us but allow the word of god to keep us on the right path and not get thrown off and get detoured that will lead us to commit sin this this was judah's problem they they got sidetracked and they took their eyes off the price they took their mind and their their hearts off of the lord and look where they ended up they disobey and disobey and disobey until, until god said okay that's it that's enough you need to be punished but now that it's time for them to come back they need to be cleansed can't just come back in the same old way some kind of cleansing needs to take place and daniel who is in the word he 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 knows what the order is and he know what needs to take place so he looked to the lord in prayer not only just for him but on the behalf of the whole nation because their hearts needs cleansing before they can go back they need a heart check up to the lesson verse 5 but we have sinned and done wrong we have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations and here we see how uh, Daniel how he prepared himself for confession for intercession for interceding on the people's behalf and acknowledging wrong what did he say we have sinned and done wrong you know same is true for us when we sin against the lord it behoove us to admit to it and confess and ask god to forgive us because you know what it's not going away it will never go away sin needs to be confessed god is holy and it behoove us to confess to whatever we have done wrong against god or against one another because it's not going away it won't just go away verse 6 we have refused to listen to your servants the prophets who spoke on your authority to our kings and princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land and so listen to to, to daniel's prayer listen to what he the guy is saying we have sinned we have done wrong we have refused to listen whose fault is all of that ours when we take god's kindness and his mercy for granted because because he doesn't punish right away because he doesn't check us right away that doesn't mean we are getting away with it and because he doesn't immediately check us many of us continue down that destructive path of sinning until one day it catches up with us like right here you know because the lord doesn't punishes us right away it doesn't mean he doesn't seize it in proverbs cha chapter 15 and verse 3 it says the lord is watching everywhere keeping his eye on both the evil and the good did you hear that he sees everything if we also go to hebrews 4 and verse uh, 13 it says nothing in all creation can hide from him everything is naked and exposed before his eyes this is the god to whom we must explain all that we have done did you hear that we must confess our sins to the lord and ask him for his forgiveness because it's not going away back to the lesson verse 7 lord you are in the right but as you see our faces are covered with shame this is true of all of us including the people of judah and jerusalem and all israel scattered near and far wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you 
And here we see how uh, Daniel's confessions uh, uh, is saying that, Lord, you are right and we are wrong. You are right and we are wrong and we're covered in shame. Now look at the contrast. God was in the right and the people was in the wrong. On the opposite side. That is what sin caused. Sin will cause us to be on the opposite side of the Lord. Put us on the outside looking in. Falling from his love and his grace. When we sin, it will cause us to turn away from the Lord. Because sin comes with shame. We, we, we won't have the desire to run to him because now we're shame. We're feeling shame. We're not going to run to him. It will cause us to go the other way because it causes shame and it disrupts our relationship. It causes disruption. And not only that, it causes the world, the ungodly world, to see us as, to see that shame on us and, 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 and mock, we become a mockery to them because we're saying one thing and we're doing something else. That's what Judah was doing. They would go to the temple and they would call him the Lord, but their lifestyle was not reflecting what they were saying. And to the surrounding nation, they were just a big joke. Just like the world that we're living in today, there are many out there think the church is a big joke because they're seeing one thing and hearing something else. Lord Jesus. And here Daniel says, we are the problem. We are the problem. And that is why we have to constantly examine our own selves. You know, James put it this way. In James chapter 1, and let's start looking at verse 21. He says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the message God has planted in your hearts. Here goes that heart again, for it is strong enough to save your souls. And remember, it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you just listen and don't obey, it is like looking at your face in a mirror, but doing nothing to improve your appearance. You see yourself, walk away, and forgot what you look like. But if you keep looking steadily into God's perfect law, into his word, the law that sets you free. And if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. It's a blessing to read and study God's word. It's like a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It guides us. It gives us understanding and it, it gives us understanding and shows us what is right from what is wrong. Amen. Back to the lesson, verse eight. Oh Lord. We and our kings, princes, and ancestors are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. Right here, it sounds just like what happened back in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10. Remember, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, verse 10 says, you know, well, look, go back to look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, the Lord called to Adam, where are you? Verse 10, he replied, I heard you, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. You know, naked carries the idea of shame. It's, it's, a, it's the same idea of being shameful. And that's the effect of sin. Again, sin will disrupt our relationships with the Lord and separate us from him. And that is why we have to, here we go again. That is why we have to pray to the Lord wholeheartedly confess Daniel here was confessing on behalf of himself and the nation the Lord doesn't want us to walk in shame and go the other way and run away and stay separated no he wants us to turn back to him he wants us to come back to him he said in his word in John first John chapter 1 first John 1 and verse 8 he said, if we 
say we have no sin we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth but but if we confess our sins to him he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from every wrong did you hear that the lord is waiting for us to turn back to him so he can cleanse us and restore us back to him we will now go to section two and it will deals with a prior of repentance verse nine but the lord our god is merciful and forgiven even though we have rebelled against him verse 10 we have not obeyed the lord our god for we have not followed the instructions he gave us through his servants and the prophets. And here we see how uh, Daniel continues to point out the mercies of God. God's mercies is new, new, new mercies every day. However, we must never take it for granted. We must never see God's brand new mercy, mercies uh, daily, uh, take it for granted and see it for, for some kind of weakness on God's part, we must never do that because scripture lets us know in Galatians chapter 6 and starting at verse 7, it says, don't be missiles. Remember that you can't ignore God and get away with it. You will always reap what you sow. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful desire will harvest the consequences of decay and death but those who live to please the spirit will harvest everlasting life from the spirit and this is a principle that involves all of us every last one of us what we sow we will reap don't fool ourselves obey the lord allow his word to guide us once again, allowed his words to be a lamp to our feet, to show us where we need to go and how to get there and be the light to our path, to give us understanding of what is right from what is wrong. So we don't go out on our own and get in trouble with the Lord because we're not guided by his word. Listen to what Daniel says here. He said, all Israel has disobeyed your instructions and turned away, refusing to listen to your voice. So now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been poured down on us because of our sins. The people were given the law of Moses. Moses sat them down and gave them the law of the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, starting at verse 15, he, he said to them, But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and laws I am giving you today, all these curses will come upon you and overwhelm you. Moses went on to give a list of bad things that will come up on them. They were told in advance. Same is true for us. We have the word of God to lead and guide us. And if we don't allow his words to guide us, same thing will happen to us. Verse 12. You have kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you warn. Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. And you know what, what God had given to the people back in Deuteronomy chapter 28 was choice. The choice to choose to obey. Obey me and receive my blessings or disobey me and face the curses and consequences of disobedience. And just like Daniel is going through the history of the people and their wrong, the thing that they did wrong, we too, at some point, we too should examine ourselves and ask ourselves, 
when we face difficulties and, and difficult situations and difficult circumstances, we should also ask ourselves if God has reason to send us judgment. What have we done? Did we do something? So if we know, if we know that we have done something wrong, then we too should ask the Lord to forgive us, ask for forgiveness and ask him to help us to do better. It's not that we're not going to do anything wrong or we're not going to sin. No, we are going to sin. As long as we in this body right here, this corrupt body right here, this me, myself, and I body right here, we are going to sin. Here is the good news. God has given us a way to turn back to him and to repent and ask him for forgiveness and ask him to help us to do better. Our goal should be, Lord, help me to do better. Help me to strive to do better to become, to become more like Christ each day. It's not like I'm not going to offend you, but help me to do better, to turn from it and do better each day. Verse 13, every curse written against us in the law of Moses has come true. Yet we have refused to seek mercy from the Lord our God by turning from our sins and recognizing his truth. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all of these things, for we did not obey him. And again, Daniel continues to point out God's in the right. And guess what? With all the disaster that came upon them, they refused. Did you see how many times that word refuse popped up? They refuse to turn back to him and obey. And so therefore, Daniel's only option, his only option was to throw the nation of Israel at the mercy of God. Daniel intercede on their behalf because think about it. If God was to totally destroy Judah, then who would carry on the lineage where Christ would come from? Remember, from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to Babylon, these same Babylons right here, Judah, is another 14 generations. And from Judah to Christ is another 14. God, he, he has to keep his promises to Abraham and David that he would raise up a king. He promised David he would raise up a king on the throne that would reign forever. Somebody have to intercede on their behalf. You know, some of us, we need to intercede on the behalf of our families because we know they're not coming. They're disconnected from the Lord. They will never come on their own. They're not capable to come on their own. That's why we have to intercede on their behalf. Daniel had to step up. Judah was so disconnected from the Lord that it will never happen. So Daniel, who knew the word, those of us who said that we, we knows what our salvation uh, is and, and how salvation is received, we have to step up and intercede on their behalf. Pray, look to the Lord on their behalf and ask the Lord to open up their ears to hear. This, the word lets us know that faith cometh by hearing the word of the Lord. So that is our, some of us, that's our job. That's our ministry is to pray for our family, family's salvation. Here we see how Daniel, how he repented from the heart. He wholeheartedly repented to the Lord, sincerely repented to the Lord based on his priors. The Lord was very merciful to his people. So as we close our lesson, what can we learn? What can we take away from Daniel's prior? Well, for one, Daniel, he teaches us that in every stages of life, we must be people of prior. We must pray. 
prayer was a lifestyle for Daniel. If we go back in time, uh, we see that when Daniel heard that the king wanted to kill all the wise men, he sought the Lord in prayer. He prayed for God's mercy. He prayed in faith. We also know that uh, when King Darius made a law to prohibit all priors uh, except priors that was uh, going to the king, Daniel ignored that order and he prayed to the Lord three times a day. He prayed and he gave thanks to the Lord. And here we're seeing him praying in humility. So as we go through this week, let us have an aim. Let us have an aim to see our needs to make prior a way of life. Let us have an aim to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways, knowing that his word says he will direct our path. Let us have an aim to remember that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and as a light unto our path. It guides our steps and, and it helps us to understand what is right from what is wrong as we face our daily choices. The word of God will help us to understand what is right from what is wrong. Amen. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a thumbs up share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you until next time. Bye-bye.